My childhood was unique. Born in Palm Springs. Uh, when I was born, my, my father already was diagnosed with skin cancer. Passed away when I was three months old. From about 14 to 16, I gradually got more and more into trouble. I didn't really go to school. I just ditched a lot, and I wanted to do all the fun things that everyone else was doing, because I felt like I was never allowed to do that. So at about 16 years old, my mom, she, she pretty much had it with me and told me, you know, you straighten up or you can leave. So I was like, cool, I'll leave. I was in the streets, just, you know, getting into trouble. I think we ended up breaking into an RV or something. That time I went to juvenile hall. Hello. Hi. Hello. Can I help you guys all sign in? There's a portion up at the very top that everyone needs to read. Once you have, go ahead and check it out and then just sign your name. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Used to be when Cub was here, it was all detention kids. Because they didn't know what was going to happen in their future, some of the behavior reflected that. They were scared. They were scared. They didn't know whether they were going to placement, home, where. They A lot of times, they just don't know. I remember one of the sadder things we used to see was when somebody would get released, but there'd no nobody to pick them up. Nobody to pick them up. Yeah, nobody would want to come pick them up. Yeah. And they'd be released, and they'd have to stay in here, and all the kids would be like, man, mm -hmm. that's messed up. Yeah. Because everyone messed. counts the days, so they get out. Mm -hmm. It comes a day, and nobody wants to get you. Right, right. right. You know, yeah. that, that was like the saddest thing to see. This is pretty much the oldest part of our facility, but Cub may have spent some time in this facility. Let me see if we got lights on it. Let's probably go to unit four. There's some more light in over there. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Spend most of my time on that side. Yep. Mm -hmm. On that side, unit two. Yeah. Yeah, this used yeah. to be a big fenced in area with razor wire. Mm -hmm. And we used to play volleyball. I broke down a few times because you're, you're alone, you know? Uh, you miss your family. But uh, I, I always had that strong sense of I did this to myself, so I tried to tell myself to man up. I told myself, look, if you're gonna be in here doing nothing, you might as well catch up on school because I was about a year behind. I was only supposed to be working four hours a day and I would take the books back to my room. We were allowed to read them, but you couldn't do any work because you weren't allowed to have a pencil in your room. So I would break off the pencil tip and hide it in the Velcro in my shoe. And I was nervous because we would get strip searched when we got back. If you got caught with a pencil tip, they think you're gonna make a, a weapon and stab somebody, so it's pretty serious. The kids in there have all these ways to make all these cool things. I, they showed me how to make a pencil with toilet paper and string for my underwear, the elastic. And so I made a little pencil with the, with the toilet paper and the string, and I would sit on the toilet because there was cameras in the room. And I would sit on the toilet and I would do my workbooks in there. In three months time, I did a year's worth of, of school. I, I got enough credits to catch me up. First of all, I'd like to welcome everybody here. Uh, we have a special guest here today. Cub Swanson is a perfect example of what you can do if you believe. You believe in God and you believe in yourself. So today, let's clap it up. I'm gonna introduce Kevin Luke. I hate speaking in front of people. It's like one of my worst fears, but here I am, I'm doing it. I just wanna get the hell out of here. I really never wanted to come back, but you know, here I am. Just trying to help you guys out, so. I remember sitting right there and a fight broke out when I was about to eat and the pepper sprayed the whole room and we all had to clear out. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm hungry. You guys, <laughs> you guys are fighting. And uh, I remember waking up at like seven in the morning and brushing my teeth and some kids started fighting and got pepper spray on my leg. I'm like, it's seven in the morning. How are you fighting? How are you fighting right now? I know that I have more of an influence than anybody there at the juvenile hall just because 
kids respect fighters because they think it's cool and they respect somebody who's been there and lived it. It's much more impactful than even myself standing before them and telling them a story of triumph and overcoming things. It's, it's everything to them. He's from here. He's actually from this juvenile hall. So it, they can relate. They can relate. When you're in here, you get to a point where, oh, poor me. My mom didn't do this. My dad, blah, blah, my family. And it's all a bunch of, it's, it's crap, you know? Quit feeling sorry for yourself, you know? You got to play the hand that you're dealt, OK? If you have issues in life, you got to deal with them. You always run from them, you're going to have problems. Fight for what you believe you deserve in life. Fight for an education. Fight for a better life.